Hello everyone, my name is Ira Fay, and I'm excited to do a special video for you today. It is both an interview and a special game analysis. This is going to be my last video of 2021, and it includes my most epic game ever. And it was inspired by the interview questions that I received from the organizer of the 2021 League, who invited me to do an interview, which I'm going to do in this video shortly. I won't take too long, but it, there were some interesting questions. And then I'll get into the analysis of the game. So I'll jump into the questions first. So these were questions generated by the organizer of the League, and it's available. The link to this interview in more detail is on, is on Discord. So first, my first experience with War of the Ring was with first edition, I don't remember how many years ago, but pretty close to, I think, when it came out. And it was with my friend Hunter or my friend Gabe. I can't remember who I played with first, but uh, we got hooked at that point, played many, many games with them in first edition and then on to second edition. So the next question is, how is it to organize the annual War of the Ring tournament? Obviously, I, I really enjoy that. It is very rewarding to get to play with so many different players. I certainly want to thank Michael Souza, who organized it for many, many years, and other people even before him organized it. So I'm, I'm just sort of carrying the torch. But it's, uh, it's uh, not, not too much trouble these days. I have a lot of great support from a lot of judges and other organizers. So it's, it's actually a really great community. Okay. Uh, thank you for the compliments about my YouTube channel. What else should we expect? I guess we're going to do an interview on my channel. Uh, I'll try and do some more strategy, but strategy analysis. But but really, I, I'm doing this both because it's it seems like other people appreciate it, but also because I want to try and improve. And so the more conversations and analysis there is that's out there, the, the better. Okay, favorite side, nation, and card. I think favorite side has got to be free people. Favorite nation. I didn't really think about this in advance. I don't know. Favorite nation. I'm always, I'm always partial towards dwarves in fantasy settings, and I feel like so often things can go wrong for Shadow and Erebor, and so I'm I'm gonna go with dwarves. Though though the North is great. I mean they're all good. They're all good. Um, card. I don't know. There's so many good ones. I, hmm, a card that I'm always happy to see. Celeborn's Galadrim is really good because Lorien is often a target and it draws you a new card plus it's daylight is the combat effect. Those are all pretty good. So, okay. I'm not going to comment on Lords of Middle-Earth or Wars of Middle-Earth or Battles of the Fifth Age because... I don't know those games. I'm, I'm not even sure. It's not even fifth, right? It might be first. I don't know what that F is. Yeah, I don't... Um, I, I, have, I, don't I think I've maybe played this once. And uh, though I played the other expansions, I'm not, I'm not an expert in those. Okay, it's World Championship Round 1. You check who your opponent is. Which nickname do you not want to see next to your name? And th I saw this in advance. I think that this is a nice question, but because I'm a pretty strong player, there's nobody who I'm particularly afraid to play. If I was playing a strong opponent, I would be excited about that. If I was playing a newer player who was unknown, I'd be excited about that. But when I was thinking about this more, the true answer is um, my son or daughter. If any of them ever, if, if they ever play in the tournament, I would definitely not want to be paired against them in round one. All right, unluckiest moment. I thought about this. I don't have a great answer for this. Um, the, a recent game that I played, uh, um, round one of the 2021 league playoffs, where I was free people and went for, a, had really bad hunt at the beginning and then went for a free people military victory without success. Maybe that was, I don't know if it's unluckiest, but it was relatively unlucky. Um, my opponent played well in that game too, but okay. Um, luckiest moment I can recall, I'm going to combine with most epic moment you can recall. And so this is going to lead in to the game. I'm going to show the game now. But you know what? I'm, I'm going to wait on that just one second. I'll answer the other interview questions. One change I'd make to the board game, I think it's very well balanced, particularly in second edition. But I do think it would be cool to just give an action token to free people in the base game all the time. Why not? 
I think it would balance it. It would just make it that much closer to 50%. So I would, I would give the free people one action token. And that would feel, I think, really, really good. My nickname is Ira on Discord, so not <laughs> nothing to explain there. Um, nerf, what would I nerf? I don't know, it's pretty good. I mean, balance is pretty good right now. Um, I don't know that there's anything I would particularly nerf. Buff, the thing about balance, it's just, it's tricky to get the balance exactly right. If I was gonna talk about one, uh, I think there's something about one one card or something that, that I might want to change. Uh, maybe I maybe I mixed it missed it. Um, I feel like Return to Valinor is a card effect that literally, like basically, never makes any sense to play because the combat effect is Deadly Strife, which is so strong, and the conditions for playing Return to Valinor are that you've your shadow you've already captured an elven stronghold and you have not besieged any other elven strongholds and then you only get to hit them on sixes so it's just it's just not useful enough i think if you could if it would hit on fives and sixes which seems maybe a little too powerful or if it could hit um when the stronghold is besieged and so they can't immediately reinforce but then that's not so thematic so i i don't even know how to change that um maybe you just get to send one elf away that that could be interesting one elf leaves Okay, um, let's get to the game. So hope th hopefully those were interesting interview answers, but really what you're here for is literally the most epic game that I have ever played. Here it is. All right. So where are we? This is round three of the 2019 uh, World Tournament. I am, and it was Swiss, so we're in round three. I am playing the free people this game, and my opponent obviously is playing Shadow. They are a strong, strong player in Nil Dog, and we have begun the game. So they uh, allocate one eye and roll two more, and then don't don't get a second muster. So they only have one muster, so we know that Saruman is not coming out this round. And I roll this ridiculous roll of three three Palantirs and a muster. I'm lucky that I at least have Elven Rope to play. So this is how the game starts off. Um, obviously I start off playing Elven Rope, that's my only playable card. Hopefully I'm gonna draw into other useful uh, character cards. All right, I draw Athelos, not so useful. My opponent starts moving armies down in Gondor, or down in Mordor and uh, to near Harad. I have to draw a card because what else can I do? I can't play Athelos and I can't play Help on Look For, so I draw a card. And I draw a strategy card because I have a muster, so maybe it's gonna be useful. And they move their army into Morinon, and I'm thinking maybe they're going up to Do up, up north, because if you don't get too many musters, but you still have some army movement, at least you can get that army going, and then by the time you get there, you will have had enough musters to, to be able to catch up. So, you know, round two or maybe even round three. All right, I go ahead and play Guards of the Citadel because I have Gandalf as guide, so I'm cycling I'm cycling more strategy cards, that's good. And I get Swords and Ariador. Not particularly useful, but I can at least cycle it with my muster. My opponent continues moving into Dagger Lad, and then I go ahead and muster the Elves because I can always play Swords and Ariador later with the Palantir next round, and I do want to get Elves towards war because they're likely gonna be attacked, so good to defend them. And my opponent gets Isengard to war, which makes sense. The next round they can get Saruman. Fellowship did not move at all. I didn't want to give my opponent a ring on round one, even though it's very nice to move once around. I just didn't want to do it. They would have been able to potentially get Saruman, and it's just, I, there were three eyes in there, so it wasn't even that appealing. All right. So I draw a Vile of Galadriel. Obviously that's useful, and Riders of Theoden. Always happy to see that. Certainly before I've moved my armies out of Edoras, that could be really good. So they allocate one eye, roll two more again, and I get a great roll. So this is a super, super flexible roll. I can do anything I want with it. And um, I decide, I think for a bit, and then I decide to separate uh, Strider, Legolas, Gimli, and Boromir right off the bat. So 
I think I don't I don't you know looking back on this game I'm like how did I do that that's crazy talk to do that um, I guess my thinking was uh, let's try it let's go for a military victory or at least put a lot of pressure on on shadow for a possible military victory they've rolled four eyes already and they didn't get Saruman round one so like I have some time to catch up um, it's not like I have fear of fire foes or a book of Mazarbo right here, which would be awesome, but um, I'm still going for it. So I separate them, and I leave in Gandalf and the Hobbits as a hedge against maybe I'm going to move the Fellowship at some point, and maybe if my opponent completely ignores them, I'll be able to, who knows, maybe do something there. So maybe it would make sense to take Gandalf too, but I don't know, maybe I could still do something. So that, that's my thinking. Um, my opponent gets going with uh, attacking Gondor. Presumably, uh, I'm bringing <laughs> Strider and probably Boromir down to Minas Tirith, so they know that that's a reasonable target to attack. I move. I, I send Gimli to the west. I send uh, Legolas to Lorien, and I send Strider and Boromir down to East of Net. If I had brought a hobbit, um, it would allow me to drop a hobbit off in Fangorn along the way, and then when Gandalf dies and comes back, I could bring Gandalf back in any of the Elven strongholds. So it would give me a little more flexibility. So maybe that would have been, if I'm really going military, maybe that would have made more sense. Um, my opponent continues to move armies in and around Gondor, so they gave up on the sort of... I thought that this, this army in Daggerlad was going to end up going north to the Woodland Realm, but I think because they see Aragorn uh, or Strider heading towards Minas Tirith, they want to get in get in on the action and, and put some pressure there. And they now have a, a bunch of armies, North Athelion, South Athelion, West Rondor, they're, they're surrounding Gondor. Okay, I have to spend a ring because I don't have Fear Fire Foes. It would be so beautiful if I had Fear Fire Foes here. I wouldn't have had to spend a ring. Gimli would have ended up in, in Bree or the Shire. I would have brought the North to war and I would have gotten my uh, the king down to Minas Tirith. But I didn't have it, so gotta spend the ring. So my opponent gets a ring. We comment that I really wanted to have Fear Fire Foes. They get Saruman and I get Aragorn. So turn two Aragorn. I gave up a ring for it, but maybe it's worth it. My opponent then immediately uses that ring, which I think is good, to muster. So they muster Sauron towards war. So that's just going to accelerate their ability to attack Minas Tirith, which I think makes a lot of sense. All right, so I drew um, through Dana Knight and, and Ents, and I discarded file of Galadriel, which is kind of crazy because that is a one of the most powerful... Um, corruption saving healing. It's one of the most powerful healing cards in the game. Second most, second best to Mithril Coat and Sting. And I discarded it because basically I'm saying I'm going for a military victory and I'm declaring it from the beginning of the game by separating so many companions. So maybe if I'm going to do that, then like why not also bring Gandalf or some hobbits too? So, you know, I'm really giving up on the fellowship right from the beginning of the game. Okay, so next round, my opponent allocates zero eyes, which is definitely right. If you see the free people player going for military victory and they <laughs> move the fellowship even once, allocate zero eyes. I think that makes sense. The, there's maybe some risk that I rolls, the shadow rolls zero eyes and I get a bunch of you know movement and then the fellowship just zips along. And so th that's sort of what I'm, I guess that's what I'm playing for here with Gandalf, leaving Gandalf and the two hobbits in. Because if I get like four movement right here and it's turn three and there's no corruption and no tiles drawn, like that's that's not bad. So, okay, um, I get some nice flexible rolls. And one of the things is about bringing Boromir down to Minas Tirith and bringing uh, Legolas to Lorien is that now... I can use these character dice as musters, or palantirs as musters, if I need to, to get the elves to war and to get Gondor to war. All right, so I start off by mustering Gondor to war because I want to be prepared to muster in Minas Tirith. If Shadow comes in and attacks Asgiliath, then I want to be able to use these musters and get another elite into Minas Tirith before the army comes in. 
All right, so there's Boromir ability, and then again, Shadow comes in and attacks, attacks from the north. And I think it probably makes sense to attack from the north because it sort of creates a creates a wall. I don't know. May, maybe it makes sense to attack from the south. I don't. I don't know exactly where. So there's one hit, and I um, get one back, and then retreat into Minas Tirith, and now Gondor is at war, which is exactly what I planned for, and then I muster an elite into Minas Tirith. So this is a substantial army here, sitting on a mustering point while I have two musters. And on one hand, Shadow can just throw armies at it. I mean, they do have more armies, but if you go too far as Shadow, then you do have Minus Morgul Mornon and Barad Dur open right now. So got to be at least a little cautious about this. All right, so I just sit there and muster and see what see what he's going to do, or my opponent's going to do. They bring in the Witch King, and I think that makes a lot of sense. Um, so, yeah. Good to have the Witch King, good to have more leadership. I go ahead and muster another elite, and then my opponent attacks into Minas Tirith, and I stay and have a field battle. All right, so they use Dread and Despair, which makes a lot of sense. They're going to forfeit. They forfeit all four. And then managed to roll a bunch of sixes anyway, doing three damage. I roll one, and it was really great. That was really great card play because I had no quarter, and so they avoided a whole bunch of hits by, I didn't even get a single hit there. So, so that was great. They press, and then I retreat out of Minas Tirith, giving them two victory points, but retaining this army. And so they move in a couple of units. But now they're going to have to worry about what's going on What's going on with this army. For instance, I could play through a day and a night right now and end up in North Athelion. Um, I'm not sure if I do that. I passed here. I guess I wanted to sort of bait them a little bit. I don't really know why I didn't just go for it. I guess the point is it's hard to get... Um, two strongholds. I can certainly get one stronghold, but am I going to be able to get two? I don't have other nations at war yet. So I guess that's what I'm thinking here. I do have, I literally have this army die that I could use to get this army into North Thillian. They attack once, maybe, and then I can get into Min Minus Morgul. All right. So they think they muster Southrons and Easterlings towards war. I move the fellowship here. I'm not sure what I was thinking. I'm surprised I'm not like mustering elves towards war with Legolas's ability. I don't know. I really don't know what's going on with that. They, I get hit. Oh, maybe I was thinking I want to get rid of Gandalf. And so I'm going to try and get hit. I don't know. Um, I lose Gandalf here, which certainly makes sense at this point. I'd rather, I'd much rather have Gandalf the White on the board than Gandalf leading the Fellowship. Um, and being revealed doesn't really matter. I'm obviously not doing a lot with the Fellowship. All right, my opponent gets the Southrons and Easterlings to war, and then I muster more Gondorian units in Pilargir and Dol Amroth. And then they play Mustering of Long Planned War. All right, and so that, I think, maybe was a good reason to have moved quickly to take Minus Morgul? I don't know. I guess I just felt like only one wasn't enough. But I see why now they got the I got the South Run, get the South Runs and Easterlings to war. They also have King is revealed, which is great. They can get they can get five units in, in Minus Morgul. So they're getting some good musterings early on. Alright. So um let's see. I discarded Swords and Ariador. I got more uh, Rohan mustering. And Heroic Death is great when you're going for a military victory. I mean, it's great whenever you have companions, but particularly if you have, you know, level two or, or Aragorn level three companions, it can soak up a whole bunch of hit points. My opponent discards Lord of the Ring. Obviously, that's a great choice. And they have to allocate one eye. So that's the one benefit of moving the. Uh, fellowship last round. They allocate one eye, roll one more, and then I get a, um, you know, this roll is not great because what I really need is a Will of the West. I want to bring Gandalf in. 
and my opponent got a whole bunch of musters. This is this is and a bunch of attacks. So this is this is a great roll for them. But they don't have any character dice. So maybe if they want to move Nazgul around, it would be difficult. If they wanted to mess with the fellowship, it would be difficult. But they don't need to worry about the fellowship. So I think this is a quite a good roll for them. All right. Okay, um, I use Legolas, I whine a little bit for not getting a wow. I use Legolas's ability, and and this is, I mean, this is the nice thing about separating companions early. You have some flexibility about um, just how you how you use them. Uh, how you, Sorry, you have flexibility about your dice. If you have a bad roll, you can use any die to use, to use those abilities. So I'm happy to be mustering the elves towards war here. My opponent gets armies going, and they block. They have now blocked um, North North Athelion, which is good. And so maybe that was an argument to have attacked from South Athelion in the first place, because then you would have had this structure instead of the structure they had before. All right, I play the Eagles are coming as a card effect, maybe because I see that they don't have any character dice and therefore it's going to mess with the leadership of this army in Osgiliath okay and I kill one Nazgul and the other one has to run away the witch king is immune so hey that's a good idea maybe make the witch king have to run away that would be that would be better um okay but not kill him I guess um Maybe, yeah, maybe he should count as a Nazgul, but he can't be killed. So at least you get to roll three dice to hit. All right, so my opponent's moving armies around, trying to sort of keep keep Gondor under control, muster more Nazgul that don't have a way to move them right now. And then, let's see, um, mustering into South Rune, And then I get the elves to war. They muster some regulars in Dol Guldur and Moria. I guess they're coming after Lorien. And I muster an elite into Lorien. And then it's, my opponent says, attack the king from the king. So the witch king is attacking Druidan Forest. And, you know, that's exciting. I have Nameless Wood, which is if the defending army is in a Rohan region, Fangorn or Orthanc. So if I can manage to retreat into Fold or Eastamnet and then you attack into that, then I could potentially dish out a whole bunch of damage. All right, so my opponent plays Relentless Assault, which is very strong, and I don't play any card. So this is pretty dangerous for me. And they get four hits and I get two hits, which is a roughly what you'd expect. I don't know, maybe, maybe a little better, but um, 10 dice times 2. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, maybe maybe a slightly better than 2, but around 2 is not, it's not crazy. Um, and I think that was really just a great... My, my opponent's been playing cards really well. Um, I think that was a great use of units because you have all these um, South Rhine units here, you have this other army here in North Athelion, you have this army here in Gorgoroth. So, you know, when you're facing a free people military victory or military attempt, whittling down, you know, just trading one for one units is really good for Shadow because you could just muster up and you don't really want a giant army marauding around Middle Earth. You don't want a giant free people army marauding around Middle Earth. You want to just whittle it down, keep it small, so you can defend your strongholds. So I think this is just a great play on their part. I have to reduce quite a few elites, and they don't press, which is absolutely correct, because you don't want to give me a free movement into a mustering point like Fold. Even though the Rohan is not currently at war, I could at least move these units um, from Edoras into Fold, and I do have Aomer, I do have Riders of Theoden, so there are lots of ways. I think it's completely correct to not press. Also, it's possible for me to inflict 7 damage with something like Sudden Strike, so you don't want to mess around with that. I play Aomer here, and I play it into Fold, which I have not seen happen very often, but, um, you know, I want to be prepared, and I'm still standing strong right there. All right, so my opponent moves from South Rune to Northern Dorwinian, which I think is a very rare move. 
I'm not sure what's happening there. I don't know why to go, maybe, was that a misclick? No, so why are they doing that? Um, I guess they have shadows gather, and so they're thinking they could gather into Dol Golder, I guess? Or from, yeah, I guess this just keeps some options open. Okay, this army could go to North Athelion, or to Dol Guldur, or to North Ruin, or to Vale of Karnan. So I guess it just keeps your options open. Kind of cool. All right. So we're drawing a bunch of cards. I'm happy to see House of Stewards, which is playable in Druid and Forest, which is fun. And Valor is good. I mean, uh, Thrandall's Archers is good too. Not quite as relevant when the Elves are at war, because I can just muster in there if I want to. But it does let me use a Palantir as a muster, so that can be good. And then my opponent gets this crazy roll, and I get a Will of the West. So that's nice. First thing I have to do, because every, all Shadow Nations are at war, that means Day Without Dawn is possible. So if, I certainly want to get Gandalf, so he shows up in Fangorn. All right, and my opponent, again, does not have any character dice, and, if, and because there was... I did play the Eagles are coming. They don't have a lot of leadership in Osgiliath, so that's kind of nice for me. Okay, um, and they only get one, they only have one attack right here, so they're attacking into Aragorn, continuing to whittle down that army. I think that makes a lot of sense. And they play Mumakil here, I think that's great. And I want to save House of Stewards as a card to play, but. I'm worried about too much damage being inflicted on this army, so I want to keep the. Um, I want to. I want to just reduce the number of dice that Shadow is going to roll. I could have played Daylight, but I think that I'm about to leave Druid and Forest, and therefore House of Stewards will not be playable as a com as a card effect. But Riders of Theoden will, and so I think that's what I'm. That's what I'm thinking here. And they only get one hit, which I'm very happy to see, particularly with Mumakil active. And I get three hits. So that's an okay sort of trade for me. Those, they're probably still happy. I'm going to have to spend a die to retreat that army because it's just too dangerous. To, I, don't, I can't let Aragorn get killed, so I retreat. All right, my opponent musters more Nazgul. I'm a little surprised they need that many Nazgul, but, you know... Um, new powers rising, obviously great. And then they're drawing strategy cards. Again, makes sense. They don't need to worry about the fellowship at all. I play Riders of Theoden here, which I can play in fold because I have a companion there, which is kind of fun. So Rohan is not at war. And now I'm sort of tempting my, my opponent to attack me into Rohan, but then that gives me some free musters of Rohan. So, all right, voice is used, Voice of Saruman, and then I'm getting Rohan in gear. Because I'm thinking, okay, my opponent's not gonna give me free musters. I'm gonna, I need Rohan to be mustered up. I need more units. I'm gonna rebuild this army and go go attack somewhere. The elves are at war, so, you know, Lorien can be mustered up. I can go after Moria, depending on what happens with this Dol Guldur army. I could go after Dol Guldur. If I really want to, I could potentially go all the way up to Mount Gundabad. So I have some options here. And my opponent, see, seeing what's going on, musters into Moria. I think that makes a lot of sense. And I play Thranduil's Archers, I think, I guess, just to cycle cycle some cards, try and get more strategy cards. And I'm happy to muster up here. I think, uh, I think maybe I'm looking for either Book of Mazarbal, so that I can put the Dwarves to war with Gimli and Erdluin, or... Um, Fearfire Foes, which Gimli could use to put the North to war. So either of those would be nice, and I think that's why I'm cycling my strategy cards. I think that's the main main thing I'm looking for. I don't really need that elite in Wilden Realm, but that's what I'm thinking. Okay, my opponent gets more mustering cards because they've been drawing strategy cards, so I think that's great. And now I have a full six dice. All right, I roll before my opponent allocates eyes and we're like what's going on I'm like sorry i got really excited 
and then uh, they discard cards, and then we're like, yeah. Okay, so we roll, we, they didn't allocate any, and then they, uh, they roll two, and I got a great roll if they don't have Day Without Dawn. So I certainly don't want to lose two Wills of the West if they have Day Without Dawn, but what can I do? So I spend one right away, I get Rohan towards war again, and they don't play Day Without Dawn, so I feel pretty good about that. They shift their armies around. I'm not sure exactly why. I guess they're worried about a counterattack against Umbar. So, you know, if I have Dead Men of Dunharrow and this army ended up moving to Druidan Forest, it's possible I could do something in Pilar Gear, but um, I don't have it right now. But So I guess that's why they, they sort of reinforce from there. Still no characters. They have still not rolled any character dice for three rounds. That's very unlikely. To be fair, they did use their ring. They they had a ring, but yeah, no, it's super, super, super unlikely. All right. Um, obviously, this would have been way worse for them if I was making progress with the Fellowship because they could just couldn't play any of the character cards that mess with the Fellowship. Because uh, no, that's not true. They do. They have rolled some Palantirs, so a few Palantirs. Okay, and that's a good argument. That's a good point to make. If you draw either the Ring Wraiths or Abroad or the Black Captain Commands, it does allow you to move Nazgul around using a Palantir instead of a character. So there, there are some benefits of drawing character dice, character cards, even when your opponent is going for a military victory. But still, in general, it makes it makes sense as Shadow to be drawing strategy cards in this situation. And it's just unlucky they haven't gotten any character dice. All right, so I go ahead and reinforce Dol Amroth and uh, Pelargir more because I uh, it seems like this army is moving into Gondor and I want Gondor to at least be a somewhat hardened target since I gave up Minas Tirith right away. And indeed, they attack into Pelargir. They get one hit and I get one back and then I retreat into Lamadon. And then what do I do here? I pass here. I guess I'm thinking I'm just going to get a single elite into Dol Amroth. I, I'm not sure. It seems like it might be worth it to make that army stronger. I could have had like two leaders and two elites instead of one leader and one elite if I had mustered slightly differently. So one of the benefits of getting Gondor to war early is that I, I would have been able to defend that um, better. So I'm a little surprised that I'm not. And then I muster an elite in there. And I don't have Kyrdan's ships. Um, I do have Imrahil of Dol Amroth, so that's interesting. So I guess I'm just planning on playing that once they put it under siege. We'll see what happens. I muster Rohan to war. I guess I'm thinking, hmm, they probably won't be able to defeat Dol Amroth in a single attack. So that's why I'm saving Imrahil of Dol Amroth. Do I have... Oh, also I don't have any Gondorian elites. Yeah, that's a reason to not muster more elites in there. So I had already mustered a lot into the army with Aragorn and Boromir, and that's why. So, yeah, that makes sense. I do have one Gondorian leader left. So I guess I'm just waiting to see if if Shadow doesn't get too many hits in... Um, in Dol Amroth, then maybe I'll get to play Emerald of Dol Amroth, get one regular and one leader. All right, so they play Ulug High and get an extra elite there. I think that makes sense to try and finish this in one one attack, particularly because you know the elves are at war and so Kyrdan's ships are possible here. And I go ahead and start mustering Rohan up. So that's the benefit of having gotten Rohan to war the hard way. I now am rebuilding this army and it can go a lot of places. All right, my opponent moves some armies inward, and I hide the fellowship. Why? I guess I didn't, I guess the elves are already at war. I didn't really want to play Grey Company right here because I already have so many cards in my hand. So what else can I do? I guess maybe move army, move um, characters around. Maybe there's an army somewhere I want to move. It's not, it's not entirely clear. If I had brought Gimli over to Erebor instead of leaving Gimli in the West, then I could potentially have mustered the dwarves to war with that 
character die. So I don't know. Maybe I could have had him over there. He would have. This has been one, two. Yeah, he wouldn't even be in Erebor yet. Okay. Um, my opponent plays Grand and is going to take out Dol Amroth, I think. I play Shield Wall here, and they managed to not, not take it. Okay, so that was, I think, pretty unlikely. At the time I played Immortal Dol Amroth, I thought for sure they would take it. So I wasn't worried about that as a combat card. But as it turns out, they did not manage to capture Dol Amroth, I think, with pretty unlucky combat. And now I'm sort of feeling kind of dumb for having played that, but as the combat effect instead of the card effect. So that was pretty bad luck for them. All right, I get, I will go alone. Daring Defiance is actually a pretty, can be a useful combat card if you have companions around, particularly like one companion, like a Hobbit or, or maybe Bormir or something like that. Um, but I end up discarding it because I don't really have any hobbits in any combat, and I don't want to. I'm not. I don't really want to give up Aragorn or um, Boromir's both of their leadership. So, and I'm happy through a day and a night's great. Andril is obviously great, and Ent is great. Scouts is useful. Brave Stand and Grey Company super useful because I can draw a bunch of strategy cards. King Brand's Men cycles itself obviously very good. So I think that was clearly the worst card in my hand. All right, I get three Wills of the West. Oh no, they, they get no eyes and I get this roll. So, you know, I could move the Fellowship three times here. My opponent is not making a huge amount of progress on military, but um, I'm gonna wait and see. I have to redeem a night. I don't know exactly what I'm going for. There aren't a lot of soft targets for Shadow, I think. My opponent has been doing a really nice job of just sort of making slow and steady progress. And this is the risk of going with a military strategy as free people from the very beginning. Because they can they can do stuff like this where you just muster up. I mean, look at all these units in Gorgoroth and, you know, random places, Dead Marshes, North Thillian. They're taking it slow. They're going to eventually conquer Gondor and then they can work their way um, north. I do have Dead Men of Dunharrow, so that is a possibility. They have to be careful about that. But, you know, they have this army in Osgiliath. They can be prepared to counterattack. So, all right. They're moving armies, and they went to Dead Marshes. They, they sort of formed up, in, um, formed up in Dead Marshes, I guess. I continue to pass. They finally get Ringwraiths are abroad. And they're giving up, I guess, on Dol Amroth and moving into Druidan Forest, being prepared to battle Aragorn again. All right, I move Gandalf to Fold and I think I keep Legolas in Lorien. I'm not too worried about having a companion in Fangorn right now to play Ents. And my opponent attacks into Aragorn and Gandalf anyway, which I think is actually a good choice, even though you don't have leadership. You know, you're still gonna inflict some casualties. You have enough armies around. I think I think that makes sense. All right, so my opponent plays Words of Power, which is good, so they're gonna get some rerolls, and manages to get three hits, which is great, and I get three hits back. I'm not sure why I don't play a combat card there, particularly when I had some choices. I guess I just wanted to save Shield uh, King Brand's men because I wanted to cycle it. And I'm waiting to play scouts until a more key moment. And I want to let my opponent whittle, the, whittle themselves down a bit with Nameless Wood before I play Nameless Wood. I want them to overextend, I guess. So they don't press, which I think makes a lot of sense. I muster a regular in both Edoras and Fold and they attack Fords from Orthanc. So now they're like going to come in and take Helm's Deep pretty easily and merge up this army. So I, th I think they're playing this really, really well. Um, and I, I have been saving my scouts, so I get scouts into Helm's Deep and then I get an elite 
into Helm's Deep to make it at least somewhat difficult for them to take it. They attack Helm's Deep. And this is a moment like if I had a companion, if I had left a companion in Fangorn, the moment that they stepped out and attacked Fords, I could have at that moment then played the end. Um, now, if I move a companion into Fangorn th to threaten Ents, then my opponent can muster into Orthanc. So it's a little, it's a little tricky. I'm, I'm sort of, I sort of put myself in a tough spot. They are moving armies around, really being cautious about keeping Saruman prepared, Saruman safe, the Witch King safe, and it's looking pretty good. So I move the fellowship here. I guess I am just trying to set up shadow for a bad roll in the future. So I can go do something crazy if they just have a really bad roll. And it's a free movement, so why not? And then they draw more strategy cards and I play King Brandsman here to cycle into what hope, hopefully something that's useful, presumably a Book of Mazarbul or maybe um, Fear of Fire Foes. And I'm noticing that I moved Gimli to Erdluin. I'm not sure why that really mattered. That, that was back when I moved Gandalf. That was the other companion that I moved. I guess it makes sense. All right, so my opponent merges up into Moria and I'm moving again with the Fellowship. Why not? I guess I'm like <laughs> teasing Shadow. Maybe I'll do something with the Fellowship. Um, they're gonna have to allocate one eye anyway, but they are, I think they're still not worried about, let's see, what do they get rid of? They get rid of Flocks of Corbain. I think that makes a lot of sense. And I get rid of Horn of Gondor. I mean, obviously Mighty Attack is pretty great, but I guess I like Cairdon's ships better and Last Battle better. So I think all this makes sense. So I'm not declaring into Moria. My opponent has to allocate an eye. They roll two more and then I get this nice flexible roll. And I start by mustering more Rohan units and my opponent attacks Helm's Deep. I play Daylight here. It's a very powerful defensive card. And We Come to Kill is just the perfect combat card. I think my opponent has just been playing really great combat cards. And obviously that's exactly when you want to play it, when you have the five elites from Isengard. And they get one hit normally, and then I get one hit back. Obviously more would have been better because it reduces the effectiveness of We Come to Kill. And then they get two more hits. And so they have managed to make a lot of progress in Helm's Deep very quickly. They press and then they play Great Host, get one more hit and I get two hits, but that's enough for them to take Helm's Deep. And so now as, as the Free People military attack, I can't really abandon too many of my own strongholds at this point because then if I get to four victory points, the same round that Shadow gets to 10 victory points, Shadow still wins. So it's, it's a tricky balance when you're playing Free People military strategy to still try and defend your own strongholds at least a little bit. I mean, by retreating out of Minas Tirith, I did keep Aragorn alive and have had, you know, a lot of threats here, but I can't give up too much. All right, now is the right time to play the Great Company because I depleted my combat cards a bit and I draw into Fear Fire Foes, which I'm happy to see so the North can go to war. And my opponent, again, now that they've lost some elites, musters up more elites in Orthanc to defend that stronghold well. And I go ahead and merge this army and get a very nice army in West of Net. So this army now has a lot of range. It can go a lot of different places. It can attack Orthanc. It could potentially recapture Helm's Deep, though. That's not really my goal. I'm gonna either, you know, head head over to Moria or Mordor or who, who knows what, but Shadow is gonna have trouble dealing with this army. All right, so my opponent starts moving armies around and they move to East of Net with this army, with, with their Witch King army, and they take they capture Osgiliath. And this is very important because there is a card, Path of the Woeses, that Shadow needs to occupy. It either that teleports a, a army from Roh in Rohan 
to Minas Tirith. But if Minas Tirith is occupied, you can t you can move instead to Druidan Forest, Lasarnach, or Asgiliath. And so Shadow absolutely needs to occupy Druidan those three locations, those three regions to avoid Path of the Woeses. And so that's it's good that my opponent is defending against that. All right, I go ahead and play Fear Fire Foes here. Obviously, I want to get the North to war immediately, and I get Legolas and Fangorn to now threaten Ents against Orthanc in case I go attack Orthanc. Now at least I can play my play my end cards as the combat. I mean, as the event card effect if I want to, and it will prevent it will sort of discourage sh uh, Shadow from emptying Orthanc because Gandalf does not like fighting wargs. Gandalf likes fighting not school. All right, so the benefit of sending Gimli over to the west now pays off because I get I get the north to war right away. All right, well, not right away, but efficiently. And now at this point, by the way, I'm thinking if I draw the Book of Mazarbul, I have to be a little careful about that because I don't want to allow the mouth of Sauron to show up. If I get every free people nation to war, then, you know, the mouth of Sauron can can appear. So I'm probably going to be satisfied with just getting the north to war. There are plenty of uh, good mustering points for the north to be able to go attack Mount Gundabad. So I'm feeling I'm feeling perfectly happy with your fire foes. I have the red arrow as an additional scouts. That's going to give me some options. I move the fellowship again. You know I'm fine with them getting hit and having the hobbits come out. I'm also fine just. Putting, basically spending a die now to cause the shadow to cause shadow to have one fewer attack next round. So I'm sort of waiting, looking for openings. It could be the case that this this massive army is gonna run to the east, but I'm not quite yet prepared to take out another location. All right, so this time I get hit. Uh, the fellowship stays hidden, and I get some movement. And Merry and Pippin get to go visit uh, Bree and North Downs and maybe now this army is going to have this northern army over here in the west can can sort of power up. All right so this is a pretty key moment because my opponent attacks near the end of the round with their sort of last attack action attacks from east of net into west of net and I think this is generally a good idea because you want to just whittle down the giant free people army and you know i think it's a little risky because there are end cards that can be played here but i um i mean they have to do something but here here is just sort of i feel like the essence of the free people military strategy which is sort of wait and wait and wait until you get a good opportunity and then maybe something's something's going to show up so they play a strategy card and I play scouts here. So this is a moment where where Gandalf and Aragorn's army can make a run for it. I avoid the powerful effect of we come to kill and I am able to retreat to fold and then immediately attack into Druidan Forest. And now this army is free and clear to just run, run to Mordor. And it's big enough and powerful enough, it probably could hold two Mordor strongholds, also Umbar, is potentially a um, location that could be attacked. And as a note, Cairdon ships can be recruited in a coastal region containing a free people's army. So this, this army can be reinforced in Umbar or West Herondor by Cairdon ships. So I have some options with this army. We'll see what happens. All right, so I take out the unit in Druidan Forest and then my opponent doesn't have an additional attack. And so now this, this army is sort of free and clear to run and, and, and just cause trouble for Shadow. And it's not, you know, it's not so obvious. If you're in East of Net attacking into West of Net, did you really think that this army was going to get all the way to Osgiliath before you got another action? You know, that's, that's sort of hard to foresee. I guess, I guess we could call that a mistake, but uh, it's, it's, hard. it's hard to really call that a major mistake. I think it's just this is the nature of fighting against free people going all out with military. Okay, so I draw some. I draw a book of Mazarbul. I can't remember if I end up playing it or not. Um, obviously, in some ways, it's nice to have the dwarves at war, but in other ways, better to um, 
not facilitate the mouth of Sauron. I declare the fellowship past Moria. You know, maybe, I don't know, maybe <laughs> the ring is going to get destroyed. Um, alternately, maybe I think there's going to be a battle in Dimbledale. I, I don't know. I don't know why I'd do that. Um, I guess just because... Oh, because it turns off the shadow cards that require the fellowship to be one or higher that let you move Nazgul around. So it turns off Nazgul Search and Nazgul Strike, which who necessarily really cares about the corruption effects of those, but it does let you have flexibility with where your Nazgul are. So I think that's why I do it. Plus, I guess it makes sense to just make progress past Moria. Okay, so Shadow has to allocate an eye. They roll two more. And then I get this nice flexible roll again. They're getting good, you know, good number of attacks. This is what you, this is roughly what you'd expect. How many attacks do we expect? On eight dice, we expect four attacks, and they get one, two, three, four, five attacks. So you know that's good. I you would expect uh, four. How many attacks from four out of six? So I get, I get four out of six attacks. So this is slightly more attacks than expected for Shadow. Expected a number of attacks for free people. We we have good options. All right, so we stop um, because it gets late and we continue to next round. And then, all right, let's see what happens. It's been long enough since I looked at this game. I don't remember exactly all the details. Okay, so I attack into Asgiliath right away. That makes sense. I want to get ahead of this army in Eastamnet. And I have to ordain a knight. So I can do some really cool things going toward Morinon or Minus Morgul. And... I guess maybe I could have avoided Osgiliath entirely, played through a day and a night to North Athelion, and then threatened to go into Minus Morgul. Obviously, they would have had to defend Minus Morgul in some way. Maybe that would have been the better play. But this army will be able to catch up, and I'm not getting, I'm not capturing both of these this turn. So I think I'm just sort of wreaking havoc, and then if. My opponent doesn't defend minus Morgul, then I certainly will take it for free with through a day and a night, though presumably they'll defend it. All right, so I attack into Azgiliath, no hits against them, they get one back against me, they retreat to North Athelion. And so, you know, maybe maybe this is the drawback of my plan, and simply playing through a day and a night into North Athelion would have been better. This is an interesting moment, so let's make a note of, of this. I'm going to just remember that this is minute 52 um, would you instead of attacking into Asgiliath into Asgiliath there would you have moved through a day and a night into North Athelion instead of what I did attacking to Asgiliath I don't know um, okay so then they reinforce minus Morgul they bring this army from East of Net into Western I mean we'll I leave one unit behind in Druid and Forest exactly for this reason so that they can't um they can't get an efficient movement out of out of this army in, in Western Emmon Will. All right, I move Mary into Edmores and Gandalf Gandalf's army and Aragorn's army into Western Rondor. I'm going for Umbar. So that's my plan. It doesn't have, I think that even with an elite in Umbar, I can take it. And it leaves me some options maybe for the next for the next location. I do have Cairden ships, so it seems like there's going to be a way for me to reinforce that. I feel like that can hold for quite some time. All right, and I guess I'm thinking Angmar and Farhad, maybe, um, but they muster into Angmar, and I go ahead and besiege Umbar. I'm a little surprised they didn't muster an elite into Umbar there. Because, yeah, I'm going to be able to take it, but at least that elite is going to whittle me down quite a lot. So, and I know that they already played the, the um, they've played a couple of mustering cards. They played Ulug High. Um, we've seen we come to kill a couple of them. And we've also seen um, many kings. So I don't think there's mustering. that There may be one card, but not many. So I probably would have mustered into Umbar here. All right, they move some armies around. I guess they're gonna continue going for a military victory. I didn't leave a unit behind in West Herondor. Um, so, okay, I guess I'm, I'm, they're gonna do like Shadows Gather maybe 
And so if I had left a unit in Her West Herondor, it would have made it trickier for them to do Shadows Gather. Okay, I attack into Umbar. I play Andrew. Obviously, this is just a super powerful effect into a Siege. It's just two sixes guaranteed. Awesome. I've been saving this from the beginning of the game. Was this literally the first card that I had in my hand? Um, no, I don't remember. I think there was some other... Yeah, Elven Rope. So I played Elven Rope, and then I drew Athelos turn one. So this is turn eight, and I have been saving that since turn one. There's something very satisfying about that. Aragorn's like, I have Anduril. I will destroy you. And I do. So one hit back, but whatever, right? That's like just a super, super buff army. This is five elites and two regulars, eight leadership, canceling Nazgul leadership, two captains of the West. It's ludicrous, right? And I have Kyrdin's ships. So this, this is going to hold for a really long time. So I'm really satisfied by this. I think this was a good play. I got my army out in front. There weren't too many counterattacks along the way. And now I just need to figure out, I have to go somewhere else to get two more victory points. I think the most likely place is Mount Gundabad, but Shadow is not leaving me a lot of options. They go ahead and take Edoras, and I don't know exactly what to do. I guess I'm thinking about playing Book of Mazarbul here, but I just draw a strategy card. Um, and then they continue, Shadow continues to come and try and take out Umbar. I think that makes sense. I, you know, they don't know that I have Kyrdin ships and you do want to whittle this army down. So that's good. And I don't know what to do with this. I play Book of Mazarbul here, but I don't bring the dwarves to war. I move Legolas back into Lorien. I move Gimli into Bree, but I don't bring the dwarves to war because I don't want to let my opponent get the Mouth of Sauron. Okay, a little weird. I don't know what was best there. If you have suggestions on what you would have done with those two those two Palantir dice that I had that round, I'm curious to know. I'm going to make another note of that. So that's, that's a good thing to comment about. What would you have done with those two Palantir dice on turn eight? Okay, so I stay and fight and then I play scouts to retreat into the siege because I wanted to bait a powerful card effect from Shadow. Or potentially, if they didn't play any card and I stayed in the field battle, then maybe, maybe I would have been okay fighting and I wouldn't have worried too much about taking two hits. All right, in any case, I retreat back in. I'm happy to see Day Without Dawn being used up as a combat effect and I'm just happy to that's just a great card relentless assault is a very powerful combat effect particularly against gandalf because you weren't getting leadership rerolls but you have such a good combat effect so uh, such a big benefit to your combat role so that's an excellent card to play against gandalf and this this turned out the scouts effect turned out to be good i could have potentially played it as the card effect but it only inflicts you know one one you know one damage, and I feel like it allows for so many tricky, tricks tricky things, that I, I like using it as the com as the combat effect more than the card effect for Spirit of Mordor. But maybe that could have been played there, instead of Book of Mazarbul, which didn't really do much. All right, so we draw some cards. I get Wizard Staff. Usually not a card that's useful later in the game once Gandalf is in guide, but here it's actually playable as a combat effect. And Faramir's Rangers obviously can be quite useful too. I don't have a Gondor elite unit, but you know, maybe I do have I do have a unit here that could potentially end up there in, in Asgillia, so that's kind of cool. And all right, so let's keep going. I'm not sure exactly. My opponent discards Candles of Corpses dread and with Dread and Despair not useful against Gandalf because you cancel the Nazgul leadership. And they also, let's see what they get rid of, Cruel Weather. Uh, so nice to see Cruel Weather go away. So there are a lot of cards that become less useful for Shadow if you're just not worrying about the uh, making progress with the Fellowship. So, all right. Um, this is a moment 
My opponent rolled, allocates zero eyes, and then rolls four eyes. And I get a very nice mix. I get my four attacks. That's what we'd expect. And, you know, this is this is what we go for. This is exactly what the uh, free people military victory, uh, y how you can make it happen. So let's, let's see what happens. Let's see what I can do with it. All right. I start by merging my elven and northern army in Old Forest Road with the intention of going after Mount Gundabad, right? That's that's my plan. I have to be a little careful about leaving Dale and Woodland Realm completely open because my opponent could get to 10 victory points, potentially. You know, I don't know about Dol Amroth, but, you know, I think you can play... I wonder, can you play Corsairs of Umbar? Could Corsairs of Umbar be played this way from Umbar being besieged? That would be really funny. I've, I don't think I've ever seen that played. But that would be a, a way for my opponent to get to 10 victory points, right? I go and take Mount Gundabad, but then they march an army into Woodland Realm and then Corsairs of Umbar into Dol Amroth. That could be really cool. And by the way, if Dol Amroth is already under siege, then the Corsairs of Umbar starts an attack right then. So I wouldn't even have time to respond by playing Cairden ships, which is pretty cool. All right, so my opponent plays Orcs Multiplying again. Obviously, I don't like seeing that in Mount Gundabad, but maybe this army is still big enough. Maybe I should have mustered up in Woodland Realm first. I don't know. And I start by moving armies around. I'm going, I'm just going for Mount Gundabad. And we'll see. I move armies. Why did I, I brought... I brought Mary to Etten Moors. Where where did I? Oh, I brought Gimli to Weather Hills. Is what I did with that extra half movement, and and I'm not worried about the Will of the West because Day Without Dawn has already been played, which is great. So my opponent musters a, a elite in Mount Gundabad, which I think makes a lot of sense. I continue doing army movements. And maybe I should have mustered a northern elite in Carrick. I think I feel antsy to get to Mount Gundabad sooner rather than later before too much mustering happens. And I feel like Gimli plus two hobbits plus these two leaders is five leadership. Maybe this is enough to take out Mount Gundabad. And I don't need to muster more elites in Carrick. I think that's what I'm thinking. All right, so my opponent moves a regular to Mount Graham, and then an army into Dimrald Dale. Maybe, I guess, to go after Lorien. They do have Balrog, and Balrog is super good against Lorien. So, you know, I think that makes some sense. And then I attack Mount Gundabad. They send a regular into uh, back to reinforcements, which is obviously correct. No reason to have a field battle there. And then they move some Nazgul to Mount Gundabad, which is, of course, correct. The Witch King is there, and they just give up on Umbar entirely. They spend, they put all of their Nazgul. Um, they put, they have five leadership in Mount Gundabad, which I think is great, and then a few more Nazgul around. And so, you know, because they had so few actions this round, I mean, they they had three attack dice, and they, you know, we'd expect them to get four around, maybe four and a half. I think they rolled nine dice, so I guess. Four and a half, we'd expect they got three. Not so crazy number of attacks, um, but just total number of dice. They were not able to really threaten Woodland Realm. And I was sort of able to vacate this and just make this strong attack against Mount Gundabad. Um, maybe there should have been other targets. I don't know. I feel pretty good about this, you know, particularly if Gimli gets in there. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. Okay. Um... And I make a note, well, maybe I should have mustered more in Carrick, and that way I wouldn't have had to worry about Gimli getting there because I could just use a sword to get Gimli there and not worry about these two, uh, these units. So who knows? All right. I play Kyrdan's ships. Where? Why? Into Dol Amroth here. I guess, I guess maybe I realized my opponent could play Corsairs of Umbar and 
immediately start the battle. And so I guess I play Kyrdin's ships now. It's a little weird because if they were going to do that, they probably could have already done that. But maybe, maybe I just realize it now and, and I hadn't realized it before. So that makes that makes um, Dol Amroth much stronger. And I feel like, you know what, Umbar is going to be fine. My opponent gave up on retaking Umbar. So I'm, I don't need those reinforcements there. And I play them in um, Dol Amroth. I think I leave... A regular and elite because I want to be able to muster into Lorien and Woodland Realm, and I'm thinking the regular is enough to be able to defend in Dol Amroth. I don't know. It's tricky to find the right balance there. And I guess I'm planning on using a ring with this last muster. Could be. Maybe I'm just going to muster into, into Woodland Realm. It seems like, yeah, so my opponent moves towards Woodland Realm. That's certainly what I would do as Shadow. Like, you have five victory points. You just need five more, and Woodland Realm and Dale just got completely vacated. So go go get them. And what do I do? So I use a ring here. Yeah, and I, th I think it makes sense to try and win the game. I have, um, I don't know, maybe I should get more leadership in there first and try next round. I play through a day and a night here, and it's always a little sad to use through a day and a night as a combat effect when you're going for a military victory because you have so many options with it. But I'm happy with my army in Umbar, so okay. Um, Swarm of Bats I think is a great play here. Who knows what I was gonna use as a combat effect. Confusion could have dished out a bunch of damage. So my opponent, I, I roll um, no hits and my opponent rolls five hits. So obviously that is not how I wanted that combat to go. I used a ring to do five damage to myself and none to my opponent. And I kind of needed that muster in Woodland Realm anyway. Um, so it's a good lesson in if you're attacking into a siege, it's usually nice to have five leadership, especially if you're going against five leadership in the defending stronghold too. So that was... I don't know, I mean, obviously it's not that likely they get five hits against me and I get zero hits, but, um, you know, and it was tempting to try and win the game. If I won that combat, I would I would win the whole game. But I think that um, it was a little too long odds and I was certainly I was certainly punished for it. We ended up on, on one side of the coin there, on one side of the bell curve. Okay, so obviously I stop and um, we move along. So I'm happy to see Dan Ironfoot's guard. Maybe Erebor at some point will come under attack. Valor is a useful combat effect if I ever re, you know, regroup and attack Mount Gundabad again, though I'm certainly worried about Woodland Realm and Dale at this point. All right, so my opponent allocates zero eyes and only rolls one, much more reasonable. And I get a good roll again um, for attacks is what we'd expect. My opponent got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven attacks. We'd expect only four and a half. So you know, that is good. Um, it gives them a lot of options. Okay, I start by mustering a regular into Woodland Realm. An elite doesn't necessarily get me that much anyway. Um, so, and I guess I'm going into Carrick to start trying to reinforce the Mount Gundabad battle. My opponent moves armies and um, is what? What do they do? Move units into Fords of Eisen. I where are they? Where are they going with that? I guess they're going to go around to Dol Amroth. That's their plan. Um, or maybe meet up in Lorien. I feel like we. I feel like Lorien is the harder target than Dol Amroth. Um, so maybe they have, do they have, um, they have Shadow Lengthens. So that's, that's pretty nice. One, two movements to Andrest, and then you can get to Dol Amroth. Um, or I don't know. I don't know what else they're going to do. I guess maybe these, the Fords of Eisen army and the Westman army can try and go for Lorien. And then with Balrog of Moria, you have some good chances there. That's also pretty reasonable. Um, 
So, you know, I, this is a moment where the free people military victory just might have petered out. You know, that attack on Mount Gundabad wasn't strong enough. I vacated Woodland Realm and their shadow is coming to attack where free people is weak. So that is good. All right. I could have, I passed there, but I could have mustered the other elite into Woodland Realm. I don't know why I didn't. I think I was just imagining um, wanting to use that as a ring later so I could have five attacks. But I don't really know, I don't really know what I was thinking. Um, I think that probably should have been a muster into Woodland Realm. So, yeah. All right, so my opponent besieges it. They leave a regular behind in um, Old Forest Road. I'm not exactly sure why. Um, maybe to allow for some reinforcements with the, with the um, Shadow Lengthens, I guess. I can't, uh, I'm not sure why. All right, so they go ahead and move armies. They take Dale. Okay, I guess they were just planning on taking Dale anyway. Um, they take Dale for seven and then move these armies into uh, that region, which is tricky for me to pronounce. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Feel free to leave a comment with the proper pronunciation for this region right here that's spelled D-R-U-W-A-I-T-H space I-A-U-R. I'm not even going to try. Okay. Um, all right, so... I move armies, I take uh, Angmar, and I take Eagle, and I move towards Eagle's Eye, and I move this regular towards Mount Gundabad, I guess. Um, you know, going up to three victory points, so that makes sense. My opponent moves into Andrast, and then, I don't know, is like, I don't know where, and then goes to Eastamnet, fine. And then I... Let's see, what do I do? I draw a card. So I don't know what I'm thinking here. I guess I'm just trying to wait and see. I want I want to just wait and see what my opponent does. I'm like, I should have mustered into <laughs> Woodland Realm. That would have been better. Maybe I'm like trying to draw Thranduil's archers here. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know exactly what I'm going for there. Don't really need Ents, they're not useful. Obviously nice to kill Saruman, but I don't have the dice for it at this point. And um, my opponent goes, go, go, uh, you know, plays Shadows Lengthens, the Shadow Lengthens, and merges up into Dol Amroth, merges up into Dimril Dale, looking pretty good all over the board. And then I do the crazy thing. I sally forth out of Umbar, and perhaps now you can see my plan. I have one victory point in Angmar. I have two victory points in Umbar. And if this army can come out of the Umbar siege and get to Far Harad and manage to hold Umbar and Far Harad in Angmar, that's four victory points. And so if my opponent cannot get to 10 victory points, which they'll need to do by taking both Dol Amroth and Woodland Realm, if they can't get to 10 this round, then I win at four. So that's my current plan. And because they don't have a Nazgul here, I don't know, it seems like it may be tough for them to retake Umbar. So let's see how this battle goes. Um, I play a card, which is the Wizard Staff. It's just, I mean, I, I used Anduril fighting into Umbar and I'm using Wizard Staff fighting out of Umbar. It's, it's, I really appreciate the, the the epicness of this. So maybe you're starting to understand why this is the most epic game that I've played. Um, all right, so plus two on my combats, plus one on my combat, so those are um, three hits, and then, um, so I get three. My opponent doesn't have any leadership there. They get two hits though, that's nice for them. Um, and I get, I, I press because, you know, this is my whole plan. They retreat into near Harad. And now what are they gonna do? They're gonna attack into Dol Amroth. So obviously they need to take Dol Amroth and they need to take Woodland Realm. And my goal is to take Far Harad. All right, so I play Daylight here. They play Swarm of Baths, which is great. And then they get three sixes, which is obviously 
very good on nine dice. You wouldn't really expect that. And then I get two back, which is probably not enough. We'll see, they press, and then they play Devilry of Orthanc, which is great. And um, they get only one hit, which is nice. And I get one hit, uh, two hits back. So they don't press, which I think is correct because they've seen Immerhel of Dol Amroth, they've seen Cairdan's ships, there's nothing more that they need to do. Um, better to save this elite for an extra reroll next time and a press next time if you're going to use it, but you don't need to use it right now. So they have, they have two dice to get this done. All right, so I attack near Harad and I play Sudden Strike here because I have Valor later and I have um, Mighty Attack later, but if you play Sudden Strike when they're in a city like Far Harad, it only hits on a six. But if you play it in a settlement like near Harad, this is gonna hit on a five or a six. So this Sudden Strike hits on a five or a six, possibly reducing them below five combat strength or just inflicting a bunch of damage. I only get one hit, but, but that's why I played it in that order. And then I get um, three more hits. So on, you know, 15 dice, I guess 13 dice, with hitting on fives, it's not crazy to get a total of four hits. So I get three hits, one plus three is four, and then they get one back. They don't have any leadership, so they're reducing elites. And um, I leave one regular, and I leave one leader because why not? Um, it's theoretically possible there could be some like Black Captain commands and then, you know, besieging West Herondor into Umbar, but realistically I've now held Umbar because they only have two dice and they don't have a um, Nazgul here. It would be very risky for them to like counterattack with this one guy into Umbar and then I guess they could spend their ring and hope to roll a six before I roll a five or a six. Uh, and I do get a reroll. And, and the key thing to realize there is that if we both annihilate each other, I control Umbar, they don't retake it. So this one regular and one um, leader is enough to hold Umbar, and I have enough leadership in Nihara that it doesn't, it doesn't matter about leaving that one leader behind. Okay, so my opponent attacks Dol Amroth. Will they be able to do it? They have Desperate Battle, and they manage to, they manage to take out Dol Amroth. So my opponent is at nine victory points. I'm at three victory points. I have to attack into Far Harad. So I use my last uh, die, this muster, which should have been a muster of an elite into Woodland Realm. Um, and I attack Far Harad. I play, um, I play Valor here first because I'm worried that I'm gonna lose too many elites and I won't even be able to play it later. I'll use Mighty Attack on the second round if I need to, but um, I get three hits, it looks like. And then my opponent stays, I press, and then I play Mighty Attack. I miss entirely, making me nervous. My opponent doesn't get any back, uh, but the Mighty Attack hits, and then on the last, uh, whatever round that is, I take Far Harad. So I am now at four victory points with Umbar, Far Harad, and Angmar. Which, and remember, I started the turn besieged in Umbar. I, that was just an incredible, incredible battle. Way to go, uh, Gandalf and Boromir and Aragorn, and a bunch of leaders in there. Way to go. Um, but now, unfortunately, because I failed to put an elite into Woodland Realm, my opponent only needs um, to roll a single six on this combat. So they attack and then they play Desperate Battle. So they only need a five or a six right here and they don't roll it on their combat roll. They get a leader reroll and they miss on their leader reroll. My elf, uh, fights back and because of desperate battle inflicts a casualty, not that it particularly matters. And then my opponent can press. So they press with the elite and now they don't have any cards to play and they need to roll a six and they have six dice to do it. They miss on their combat roll and then they miss on their leader reroll. 
So they fail to take the single regular in Woodland Realm. I cannot believe that happened. We calculated later the odds of them winning that battle, inflicting a single hit, was, was uh, I think we figured out, 98% chance. <laughs> So obviously I should have had an elite in there. There's just no reason why I didn't have an extra elite in there. But either way, um, they had a 98% chance to win that battle. And instead, this game ended with a free people military victory, having seen a sally forth out of Umbar to take Far Harad. And uh, Gimli and the two hobbits in Angmar with Mount Gundabad besieged and the Witch King hiding in Mount Gundabad besieged. This is by far the most epic game I have ever played. And it's also, quite honestly, it's probably the luckiest game I've ever played. It answers both of those interview questions because that was ludicrous. It was ludicrous that that single elf in Woodland Realm held out against that army in a desperate battle. It was incredible. So this was my uh, last video of 2021. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you to uh, Prince Fox for organizing the 2021 league. I look forward to more league games and um, the tournament coming up next year. I look forward to hearing your comments. Thanks so much. Take care, everyone. Oh, let's look at statistics. Okay, got to look at statistics. So I think that these are um, true. No, these are probably reversed, right? These are these are probably reversed where um, this is shadow and this is free people. So they were a little bit low on on fives and sixes, not not too bad, but a little bit low, and they were high on a little bit high on rolled eyes. I had a pretty balanced pretty balanced roles. They have, you know, it's nice to be high on um, army musters. That gives you a lot of, a lot of options. So anyway, that's the game. Hope you enjoyed it. Take care. Happy new year. Happy holidays.